Today, we're taking a look at the Queen of the Underworld update, the release patch of Persephone. And I've just watched the regular live patch notes, the videos uploading right now. I'm so hyped. This card is, is so cool. Everything about her kit is so cool. It's, it's more than I could have wished for. And we're going to go into that, into the balance of that and everything, and the rest of the balance, and focus not so much on the skins, because that I will leave to the live viewing. But yeah, let's, let's just jump right on to Persephone, because I'm too excited. <laughs> so Persephone, Queen of the Underworld, uh, Wife of Hades, theme of her kit is uh, something between life and death, flowers and skulls. And her entire kit revolves around uh, these seeds that she can plant. The seeds will be planted through two abilities, through the one and the two. Primarily through the two, though. And they also interact with everything else, basically. First of all, you have the passive. I'm going to mispronounce that anyways. <laughs> Pomegran Pomegranate? Pomegranate seeds. Uh, so whenever Stephanie uh, plants a seed on the ground, she can collect that with a basic attack. She can harvest that. And if she has more than 25 seeds, or 25 collected seeds, then she can spend these to resist death, continuing to fight for 8 seconds, but dealing 50% reduced damage. Doesn't mean that your cooldown, uh, your, sorry, that your CC is reduced. And 8 seconds can be quite a while. The animation is also super sick. There's a skeleton like lifting her up from the grave, basically. Additional seeds are sold when she enters the fountain for 3 gold a seed. Persephone can hold up to 100 seeds. So up to 75 seeds can be sold. You always store these 25, uh, unless you die. And you can sell them for up to 225 gold in total when returning to base. However, every seed that you plant, that you pick up, also costs mana. So you can't just do that all the time unless you invest into some mana items, I think. Basic attacks have an AoE upon hitting a target that activates nearby harvest plants. And Activating can be done in multiple ways, not just picking them up. The first ability is Bone Rush. Bone Rush is the most straightforward ability in the sense that it's just a line ability. It does have two uh, instances, though. It throws out a Skeleton Warrior that first dashes forward in a relatively narrow line, and then after 35 units or when it hits a guard, it'll kind of like splatter into bone dust that flies forward in a wider area and is uh, quicker as well. Basically, instant damage. And yeah, these two instances have a, a different width. And I think you have to place them a little bit strategically to clear the whole wave with them, but we'll have to see that in game. And they come with 100 damage to 340 damage plus 80% scaling. So, quite a fair bit of damage here. Uh, 60 to 80 mana cost, 12 seconds cooldown. So, in itself, a very straightforward ability. And then at the end of the ability, at the, at the very back of it, it also places a skull. And these skulls, again, can be activated in different shapes, different variations. So this can be used to further clear a wave as well. And we'll get to that. Uh, we, this is more explained in the second ability, even though it's kind of linked to the first ability as well, and that's Harvest. So Persephone can place a skull on the ground up to a maximum of 10. You can't just place as many as you want. And you can activate them with basic attacks. She can store up to six skulls. I think this duration means that you can basically uh, instantly cast them, even though they have an eight seconds cooldown afterwards. So you get another skull after eight seconds. When activated, they heal Persephone. After four seconds, it turns into a sprout that explodes, damaging and slowing enemies. After 24 seconds, it turns into a flower that chases enemies down for three seconds before biting them. Enemies recently hit by Faharis take reduced damage from additional hit stacks, uh, hits stacking three times. And I think, as far as I was able to tell from the patch notes, from how they showed it there, it's reduced by half. And then after an activation or 120 seconds, they wither. So they stay for two minutes and then they will go. So the heal, if you harvest them immediately, is 22 to 50 plus 10% of your magical power. And that again also gives you this stack from the skull, which I'm not sure if it will still happen if you detonate them later. I don't think, I don't think the detonation gives you the skull. So I think you have to harvest them pretty much immediately, as far as I understand it. Then if you hit it after 4 seconds or later, the explosion deals 60 to 260 damage plus 70% of your magical power. So basically think of it similar to Apache Corpses, only that you only need one ability and a basic attack to activate that. And that's quite an interesting amount of damage. 
So this uh, slow here is for 30% that comes with the detonation. And with the flower that bites, you have 70 to 290 damage, so not necessarily significantly more, uh, plus 80% of your magical power is scaling. And the reduced damage is uh, down to 50%, then 75%, then 87.5%, so always 50% off, I think, it seems. And the mana cost goes from 18 to 30, and that's actually pretty important because, again, you can play six of these relatively quickly, as far as I understand it, unless they showed it wrong. Uh, just with they just had reduced cooldown on all the time, but it seems like you have six decks, so you can basically spam all of them for 150 mana. Uh, sorry, 180 mana in late game, and then after eight seconds, you get the next one. So very, very interesting. Uh, I think it might actually be worth considering to use this at level one, because you could rush into middle lane before the game starts, and then get your plans ready, and then they will attack on the first wave. I'm not quite sure how the reduction uh, works for minions and how long it lasts. So if you can abuse that or not. And you could also, you can even plant some at the, like your, your allies jungle camp so you can help them jungling. I don't, I don't know, you could even plant them at multiple places, but yeah. So that, that's uh, this one aspect that's worth considering. But then again, with the first ability, you also get additional skulls when you, when you use it. Let's just have a bit of a longer cooldown here and a lot higher mana cost with 60. And then we have Flourish. Persephone floods the ground around her with life-giving energy that propels her from the ground directly forward or backwards based on the direction she's moving. So it's kind of like uh, what Ram would be, but only forward or backward. And the harvest plants inside the area where she leaps from, not where she leaps to, but where she leaps from, uh, are immediately grown to the next stage and they activate. Meaning if you have a lot of recently placed ones, they will all just explode immediately. And if you have some that are already four seconds old, they will turn into the walking biting plants. The biting plants can be avoided, by the way, but you have to juke them because they have like a bit of an animation going on. And the first ability can also be avoided in an interesting way, apparently, because the uh, animation goes up from the point where you fire it and not from the point where you're standing when the ability uh, is fired. Hard to explain, you'll see it in game. And yeah, with Flourish, uh, after then using the ability, the next harvest cast is pre germinated and spawns as a sprout, meaning you don't have to wait four seconds for the extra damage. It has a 45 range, so not super long, a 70 cost, mana cost, and a cooldown of 15 down to 11 seconds. So, very short cooldown for an escape on a mage that can also build CDR, can immediately detonate anything in the area. Uh, can be utilized to pop a large amount of plants and then just get out, go backwards. For example, when the jungle is ganky, you, you stand your plants, jump backwards, the, the plants start change, uh, chasing the jungler, and you get another plant immediately that you can put in front of them, and you can uh, use your basic attack, and they will be slowed by the explosion by 30%, which also allows the other plants to catch up. You're still following? Maybe not, but... A lot of combo potential here, a lot of high damage potential, and this ability uh, seems to be more essential than it would maybe sound initially. And I'm not even sure if it's bad to like consider leveling it earlier just for the cooldown reduction, because uh, then you can spam the plants more, but I don't, I don't really know. It depends on how well you can play around just using the two. I think you still need the one for clear. And then, last but not least, we have the ultimate, Grasp of Death, which I actually guessed pretty well from the, uh, from the data mining. So... Also a lot of explaining. Every, every one of these abilities actually has a lot of explaining going on except the first one. Persephone conjures a mass of entrapping vines that she throws forwards. Entrapping the first enemy god or wall it touches. Entrapped gods are crippled, rooted and have reduced attack speed. Binding vines then spawn from the entrapped target that seek nearby enemy guards. Upon finding an enemy guard it binds them, crippling them and preventing them from moving away. Entrapping vines are destroyed if hit by five basic attacks, ending all effects. So this whole thing is, is pretty insane. Uh, damage numbers here, 195 to 495 plus 75% magical power. Not bad, not bad at all, but also not super insane, at least in terms of scaling. Uh, vine damage, 65 to 165 plus 30 magical power, significantly less. Attack speed reduction, 20 to 30%, depending on uh, the rank here. Uh, duration up to 5 seconds, cost 70 to 90, cooldown 90 seconds. Now, what exactly does this mean? So imagine basically a 
a nest of vines that wraps around an enemy and that can be attacked similar to like a Cabracken wall, for example. And this has uh, five health points. So you can just start attacking that while you're inside of it and it will take away these health points. And five basic attacks is something that you can maybe do as an ADC on your own late game and otherwise you'll have your allies that have to help you. So if there are multiple targets that are hit by this, they should focus on this vine. And what's interesting here is that there are multiple options to use this because on one hand, of course, you can, you can trap someone directly, but that could lead to issues because they can break free if they have enough attack speed long before the duration would normally be over and it ends all effects. But the alternative option is you can shoot these, uh, this entrapment against a wall, which means it's further away from enemies. And what this does is it forces them, unless they're ranged, unless they're ADCs, forces them to walk towards this uh, entrapment structure, these vines first, in order to get, yeah, to, to be able to take damage, uh, to, to take health points away from it. And that kind of centers them towards the vine. And the enemies that are hit by these additional vines cannot walk away. So the vine uh, allows them to walk in a radius around this entrapment, but they can't walk further away. They can only walk closer to the entrapment and uh, then they can they cannot go back anymore. So it's basically like a, a string that gets pulled in but never gets pulled out until the ability is over. And that's very interesting because with this instruction and with the vines, you can kind of, I think you can make very, very interesting plays even when not directly hitting an enemy. Though, on the other hand, of course, you can use the base damage here on the high scaling uh, to just trap an enemy and hit them with a lot of damage, and that will be very effective in many situations. And if you're quick enough and just have some plants around them and use your three, uh, you might be fine, even if they can get out relatively quickly because they will still eat tons of damage. Persephone so far sounds fantastic to me. Uh, basically very close to, in my opinion, still very close to Zyra, from League of Legends, but in a very good way with additional features that I really like, additional mobility as well, the, the gold gain, uh, and the old that's just complete craziness. So very, very cool to see. Uh, and it's gonna take a while for people to really focus on this grasp of death as soon as it showed up. And as long as that's not the case, this is gonna be crazy stuff. Then we have a recolor here real quick. I'm just gonna show the, the top part here. We're not gonna look into the card art and detail and stuff. Uh, that's for another time. And we have the new skins. I'm just gonna show them here real quick and uh, I'm going to skip over the voice lines here. You can all see that in the patch notes. Uh, we have a Star Tyrant Ares. In my opinion, effect-wise, eh, it's all right. Uh, Spirit Guide Artio, in concept, very cool, but my concern came true. The animations in the Kitsune form, in the wolf form, fox form, look very derpy. The claws, when they attack, look like this, kind of, because it's just not, it's just not massive bear paws, so it's, it's just kind of weird, and I don't know. I guess I would have had to make them bigger, and, and now, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of how the animations look like, while I like how the skin looks like, which is unfortunate. Uh, Infinite Ruler Ulran, very cool. Uh, very, very cool effects. Cooler effects on the skin itself. Pillow Fight Nike, uh, funny, nice effects. Winds of Change, Kukul Khan. Super cool visuals on the skin itself. Effects are all right. Uh, unfortunately, gigantic. Super easy to see anywhere on the map because of the super wide wings. Uh, Cal Calavera Xcardi, uh, the best skin, honestly. This is like, like the same style as Grim Mariachi Loki and it just looks so cool. They went a little bit over the top with the Calder because it has wings, which I find weird. But everything else about this is so cool. The animations are so cool. I want more of these. Hyrus, if you're watching, give me 10 more of these. Gizmo Bellona of like a futuristic mechanic Bologna. Uh, it's all right, but I like other Bologna skins better. Spooky Nightmares Cupid and Spooky Dreams Kumbakana, kind of Monsters Inc. style skins. And I absolutely love the, the voice of Spooky Nightmares Cupid and, and the effects. Uh, that one's very cool. Not so impressed by Kumbakana. This model looked a little bit rough as well. I don't know what's up with that. So, update reschedule on the 20th of August, which is in a bit more than a week, I think. Yeah, like one and a half weeks. Um, we have Persephone, we have Battle of Olympus 9, we have Battle for Olympus Final Reward, which is Coco Khan, and we have the Community Celebration event. And the, the Community Celebration event means you actually get skins for free. Now, I'm not entirely sure which skins that are. 
Because we definitely get the Spirit Guide Arteo skin for free. Yeah, community celebration event. But then they were talking more about the other ones, so I'm not sure. No, okay, okay, that was just misleading on the patch notes. Okay, yeah, we just get that. We just get that. We get a whole skin for free with two different models as well. It's not a just, it's, it's actually really generous, really cool that they are giving that away for free. And uh, yeah, the other ones are just from tests and stuff. And in order to unlock this through the event, we have to play a certain number of games as the community, apparently. So I don't know exactly the works, if there are any more conditions to that, but that's, that's what we know so far. Then we have various bug fixes that I'm just going to generously skip over here. If you want to see that in detail, it's, uh, it's just minor things this time, as far as I'm aware, and nothing super major. And uh, that brings us to the guards, which are unfortunately a bit weirdly formatted. Uh, also just fixes here, first of all, there's some missing animations, minor issues. Um, Yomon Gunner is relevant, but I think he shows up in the changes later again as well. So basically his consuming bellow uh, had the wrong scalings for multiple pools, and now Hyrus has adjusted the scaling so they work properly. So that's not glitched anymore, but also balanced the damage so that it matches the current damage. So damage-wise, nothing is supposed to change. It's just that his scalings didn't work properly before they didn't match the number correctly, and now they do. So nothing changes for, for us, it's just a fix. But it, it sounds a bit weird. And then, yeah, a, a lot more fixes in various for various guards here. Uh, like he gets his sounds back. And... Uh, uh huh, all run couldn't crit with fail not. But yeah. Um we have I'm gonna see if this set is relevant. A fixed scenario where set is interrupted from his dash while sense of active, he would go on cooldown despite not dashing. So that's actually uh, relevant. And then we have the Project Olympus. Okay. Community celebration event is actually uh, considered part of Project Olympus. Starts August twenty third and runs until the October first. And uh, this event is completely free. Inside you buy, you'll see two different progress bars. The blue bar is increased by the entire smart community playing games. The green bar is increased by playing games on your own account. And you can unlock... You can only unlock levels that the community has achieved. So I guess, uh, yeah. The more, they, the more everyone plays, the more you play, the more stuff you get. And the final reward will be Spirit Guide Artyo. Which sounds like not everyone will get it if they don't play enough, which is unfortunate. But I guess there will be an option to buy it afterwards or something. Console has field of view has been increased to match PC. Congratulations on that one. That's very nice. Uh, and adjusted controls for aiming up and down for better smoothness and use of ease. And some aim assist uh, fixing as well. UI added a timer at the end of the match lobby that shows the current queue time next to the play again button. Wait, is that only for console? It looks like it's only for console, but... Pretty sure we have that already. Console players will now remain at the end of match lobby when they use the play again button. Players will now receive visual feedbacks and icons for themselves when using the in-game Vivox voice communication system in the match lobby. Custom game lists can now be scrolled through faster and add a bit of visual indicator for your own player and custom lobbies. And new direct purchase... This, this is really strange. This is a new direct purchase skin option. A new deal section has been added Next to the Features tab in the store, these new deals will always be a single skin direct purchase option. They will feature exclusive skins from Smite's history. This will be the same for all players. This will rotate roughly every seven days. The subject to change, please watch for announcements on the exact rotations and date times. So exclusive skins being made available. Again, single skin and you can buy them directly uh, through this limited time so they're not back all the time just for limited time events it's interesting that Hyrus has taken the step but i know there were a lot of complaints uh from people saying there's so many exclusive all skins but i can never get them because i wasn't there at the time so i actually am i'm not too faced i'm i'm okay with that like hey let, let people get stuff they want to get like let them have fun uh you know your players should should be able to get old cool skin to skins too and I, I never like this whole exclusiveness level anyways so, yeah. And daily bundles will, will remain as well, of course. And that brings us to the items, finally. We have a lot of those. We have Arendite. Increased physical power from 55 to 65. It was just a little bit weaker than the other ones, and it's just... Honestly, I don't think it's the power, it's the passive. That's the problem. 
uh, even now it's gonna be awkward. I think eventually they might buff it so much that it's it's gotta be worth it just for the base stats and the passive is just a nice gimmick. Passive is just weird compared to all the other ones and that's a, that's the problem here. Fail not, decrease critical strike chance from 25% to 20%. Good on ya. And fix an issue where the buff was applying to non-target, uh, non-guard targets, also nice. So uh, that's fixed, that's kind of a, an upgrade in, in some situations here, I guess, but yeah. Primarily, we're talking about 20% crit chance now. Fail not is still going to be very good between a very high amount of power and a decently high crit chance. But I think you have to consider a little bit more now if it's always the investment you want to make. If you're playing a, a, an ADC that doesn't typically use its ult at the start of the fight or something, then there's a little bit less of a reason to build it, but there's still enough of a reason to build it. It's just, it's just 5% at the end of the day, so I'm expecting fail not will see some more nerfs because, again, the efficiency between the high power and crit chance and CR still there. Crit win. Decreased physical, power prote uh, physical protection and magical protection from 40 to 30 each. Uh, quite a significant nerf. I think it was from uh, 45 originally on PTS to now down to 30. It's still going to be interesting, especially for tankier characters. Uh, but it's like, it loses a lot of value like when it comes to raw defense compared to, say, spirit drop or something. Then you still have the passive and you still have the CDR, so I think it's still going to be valuable. It's not as... Essential. Dynasty Playtime. Uh, also, <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'm going to read this one. The rise of Mage ADCs has shown a few items to be more stat efficient than is healthy for the game. This item allowed Mage ADCs as well as traditional mages to get a good bit of offense stats while also making them especially hard to gank. This reduction should help junglers and hunters alike. It's the endless cycle of Dynasty Playtime being either not bought at all or bought way too much. This time... You have decreased magical power from 55 to 50 and decreased physical protection from 35 to 30. Quite a bit of a hit here. We'll see what happens with the next, but eh, fair enough. I actually didn't even, like, I wasn't paying that much attention to the item, so I didn't notice that it was built that much. A bit out of the loop there, but fair enough. I can, I can absolutely see why, and I always love to honestly play dumb, so. And now we, we get to the real big point here of this patch. Like, most of the item changes here are about movement speed. Movement speed is... Getting reduced on a lot of these items. I don't even know why I'm wearing my headphones still. My ears are Ooh. getting pressured. So yeah, um, we're gonna we're gonna go through that. We're starting the mage items here. So first of all, ML Ring gets his power increased from 20 to 25. Uh, instead, uh, the 3% movement speed already removed for internal ring. The upgrade is kind of the same thing here. Instead uh, of we have a, a cost slice here from 1,200 to 1,100. For 5% movement speed reduction. That one is a bit of a harder hit, I think. But then the final items are where it really changes. Demonic Grip has the movement speed removed completely uh, and the magical power increased from 65 to 75. I think Demonic Grip is getting like the worse end of some of these items here. I think it's still going to be worth it for some mages, but you, you can definitely look more towards Obsidian Shards in some situations with some guards now. But Demonic Grip is also still good, and it's still, like, still going to be so core for its attack speed on many mage ADCs, so it's not going to go anywhere really. An item that gets a more drastic change, in my opinion, is uh, Telekind's Ring. It had 10% movement speed that is removed, but the attack speed is increased from 25% uh, from 20 to 25%, not that much, but the damage magical power scaling on the passive is also increased from 10% to 15% per hit. And I think that in combination with the increased attack speed makes this item very interesting. Also because often you would have to build the money grip earlier on to get some decent attack speed and now Telekind's Ring is, is definitely doing that job too. So yeah. I think as a late game item especially, this is going to be fantastic. 15% scaling instead of 10 per basic, with like 2 basics per second at some point, uh, that, amp that, that adds up for, for, mag like for magical characters who have inherently high scalings. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how, what this does to like, a guy like Kronos, even though we'll get to Kronos later. 
Shaman's Ring, also very interesting. Increased cost from 2,400 to 2,500 because this gets more overhauls. Increased magical power from 100 to 110. Added 10% cooldown reduction and removed the 10% movement speed. And also, passive, increased duration of debuff mark on enemies from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. Honestly, considering how much more this gets in return for the 10% movement speed, with a relatively minor price increase, I would say this is... This is a massive buff in its sum, and Shaman's Ring is going to be very interesting. It was already interesting for a handful of guards beforehand, but now even more than before. I, I'm, I'm very curious how this is uh, going to go down, because Shaman's Ring was not one that was bought for its movement speed, even though it was a nice bonus. It was bought for just, just damage increases overall. And then we have the Katana Tree, the Assassin Warrior style thing. So the base movement speed on the katana is increased from 5% to 3%. On 1000 fold blade it's from 8% to 5%. A little bit of a chunk down here in the early mobility. And that actually doesn't get any compensations, which is a bit weird to me. Like I don't know why it doesn't get any like gold power. But why why do the why do the mage rings here like get, get compensations all the way through and the, the katanas don't? But uh, yeah, whatever. I guess it's just a minor decrease. Masamune. That one was more for the warriors quite often, though assassins also used it. This one gets an increase of its health from 100 to 150, and the movement speed decreased from 10% to 7%. Now you could argue yet that juking a single ability is worth more than 50 health, of course. But at the same time, I would say 3% movement speed don't necessarily change that much about juking an ability. So I'd say this could overall be worth it, at least for some if you build it in combination with some more protection for more effective health out of this 50 health. Stone Cutting Sword gets the bad end. Increased movement speed from 10% to 7%. That's it. No compensation for that. Apparently because a lot of guards that make good use of it are very strong right now, like Arachne, I guess, but... Uh, really? Like I, that, that one makes me a bit disappointed. The other one, like Haste and Katana, doesn't get a nerf. Uh, so, fair enough there. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure where it was still getting salt was coming from, but then it's a 3%. It is, it's survivable. Bamba's Mask also gets changed, but not so much in its uh, movement speed. It was just too effective at what it does with too little of a trade-off. So the damage taken is increased from 10% to 15%, and the decrease to the damage dealt like you deal 15% damage less instead of 10% damage less. So yeah, a bit of a loss on, on both ends there. You risk more by building it and you also do a little less. But Bamba's Mask is still, I think, going to be an interesting item, at least as a utility choice for guards, such as uh, especially Baron Samdiet. But yes, maybe not so much for, for carries kind of considering it before anymore. Like, I don't know if I would run it on Kronos necessarily, say, for example. Then we have Anubis. Actually gets a lot of buffs here. Um, fair enough to me, actually. I've, I've never... like I know people have issues with Anubis at a certain level of play, but I've never had that much of a problem with Anubis. If he snowballs, he's annoying, but I don't think these things are going to change that. So base HP is increased from 350 to 380. His base HP per level is increased from 66 to 70. And Grasping Hands has its mana cost decreased from 70 to 90 to 60 to 80. And the cooldown is decreased from 15 to 11 to 14 to 10 seconds. So a lot of uh, tweaks here and there and a decent amount of extra health, which I guess in some situations will come in handy for him. But again, I don't think he's going to be insane because of this all of a sudden. Arachne gets some nerfs because she's just doing too well overall and seeing more and more bans as well. And yeah. Venomous Bite has its base healing decreased from 10 to 50 per tick, plus 10% scaling, to 8 to 40 per tick, plus 8% scaling. That's a bit. I'm actually not quite sure the amount of ticks that this ability has. Um, lean off the window if I say like 4 or 5 ish now. But. I think this is going to have an impact either way. I think just chunking away like a little bit of the of the uh, healing it's going to still be noticeable uh, at some point of the game, like especially in earlier stages, I think that, that added sustain 
getting a little bit lost. But the more noticeable change, in my opinion, is going to be the web, where the slow is decreased from 25% to 15%. That doesn't mean that she doesn't still get the same movements be increased, so she's still going to be able to catch up to enemies quite decently, but they're going to be slowed a fair bit less. Caron. Caron is uh, strange to me. Caron brings strong abilities to the table, but as a hunter, he lacks enough late-game scaling oomph and utility. While he shouldn't compete directly with Vengeful Assault at Artemis, a boost to even the uh, to even the difference will go a long way in helping him feel more impactful. Master Child will further highlight this uh, his ability utility and help him land those crucial basic attacks. I think Chiron wasn't bad. I think Chiron was pretty good on the current patch, especially due to Failnot, which gives him a lot of CDR very early into the game, which is what Chiron wants. And he's one of those guys that doesn't necessarily need to build a sustained item if you don't want to. You can kind of get away with Transcendence and Failnot. You can even get away with Mage's Blessing for like a mid lane Chiron. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he really needed these buffs or if he's going to be very scary from the next patch onwards. Either way, it is a base attack increase from 1.1 to 1.4 per level. A bit and massive shot increases slow from 25% to 25 to 35%. So at higher ranks, this is gonna this is gonna slow. This is gonna slow uh, way more than a rock nade will slow now. And I I think that's scary. I think uh, this makes Chiron very easy to play as well. He's, he's, he's a character that already has been getting easier over time. He's he's went from uh, you know back in the day where he would even struggle to get marks on targets sometimes unless you were very reliably hitting your basic attacks to now getting those with ease and then you can you can just you know one two uh and run down the enemy with your three and, and now they're slowed and you will hit most of your shots or you can use the masterful shot and go into your ultimate and hit the ultimate shots a lot more reliably now so i think chiron is going to be someone to plug out for and i could even imagine well, maybe maybe some of these chains being reverted Chronos, accelerate, decreased initial movement from 25 to 15%. Um, I'm, not even, I'm not even quite sure how that works on Chronos, to be honest. Uh, initial movement. But I'm, I'm surprised they're nerfing Chronos more than they already are through the items. I think the item changes are nerfs primarily still. I forgot like Chronos that is very reliant on the mobility, so I'm surprised this. More changes on top of that, but maybe they are concerned that certain ones of the changed items will actually be stronger on him and, and then he'll still run down people through his own movement speed. So maybe it's something to do with that. And that's why we get a preemptive nerf here. Can't quite say. Hera, pull him off, increase the damage from 60 to 240 to 80 to 240 because she's struggling a little bit. And of course, uh, pulling off this way allows her to have some something else going for herself uh, other than the one which can be very risky in certain early situations. So I'm completely done with that. Goddess of Demonetization, Circle of Protection reduced or decreased the mitigations from 25% to 20% at all ranks. It was increased from 15 previously, I think. So it just went a little bit too strong here. And Hyrus has got a look on her uh, for more potential future nerfs. Janus, unstable vortex, decreased cooldown from 10 seconds to 9 seconds. I think that's a horrible idea because he already has a strong ability that does a lot of damage, even though most other guards don't... Like, like with Janus, he has so much damage in this one ability because his hit otherwise is very focused on utility. So I, I think it always makes a massive change, a massive impact when, when this item, uh, when this item, when this ability is buffed. And I, I'm concerned. I'm not happy with this. Because it means you can spam this more in a team fight, and it's going to be more impacted by things like Chronos Pendant, and I want none of that, so yeah. German Gunder. Again, I already described this. It's basically just a, an adjustment where the scaling is now fixed. It's now 50, uh, down to 45%. And the initial hit and power scaling of the bonus damage is down from 10% to 5%, but uh, because the scaling didn't work properly before, it should apparently be the same damage overall. 
Ulran is designed to be a hunter through and through. But right now he still has some mage stats, mainly the health. And that's why the base health is increased from 400 to 450, which is quite a fair bit for, for a mage. And uh, the focus light damage, base damage is increased from 100 to 260 to 100 and 280, meaning a little bit more early clear and a little bit more threat through the potential crit as well. So that's going to be interesting. I, I'm actually surprised that uh, all run needed buffs. I think it's just uh, that he's like a team team play, team reliant, team fight guard, and that we haven't really seen his full potential yet. Then again, maybe it's the lack of an escape that really forces this. And that's it for the patch notes. I will probably be... Probably, I'm assuming the, the first look at the new guard is, will come after that. I don't know what else is uh, uploaded at this point. With that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please stop by and move well. The GFC out. And that, see you for the next one. In a few <laughs> minutes, maybe. Geeksloth, out.